Good morning. Good morning. It is a beautiful sunny day today, a little chilly, but it is November in Chicago, so we're blessed for every day we have like this. Uh, a couple of announcements to bring to your attention. Uh, first, anybody want to think about the fish tree? Are we still collecting? We have Sylvia. Oh, wait, 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 Sylvia. <coughs> Vanna this morning. Um, if you see the different colors fish, it's like you can buy gift cards at Target, Walmart, or Meyer. We encourage you to come and uh, you don't pick a fish, but you pick them off of the tree. Pick a fish and you don't really have to sign up. But what we are asking for is a $25 gift card to either one, from either one of these locations so that we can uh, give these gift cards to, I uh, forgot who we're giving it to. The, 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 <laughs> to fish. The, the people that really need it, okay? Um, and it's a lot easier than we used to have them specify, the children and the parents, size six pajamas in lavender. If you can't find them, then you're you know, in trouble. So this way they can pick out their own stuff with these $25 gift cards. And it's a feeling of, um, it's a good feeling to be able to buy your own stuff and to feel you can actually go out and buy it. So please come and this is, we have to try and have these all in by next Sunday. So if you pick a fish today, uh, you can bring the gift cards into the office Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday or next Sunday. Any questions, uh, call um, Wendy at the office or talk to me afterwards. Thank you. That was great. <laughs> Anyone else have anything? Yes. Ms. Carroll. <clears throat> for everybody who doesn't know who I am, I'm Carol Bracken, and I'm chairperson for our cookie sale this year. And I just want to give everybody a heads up. It's going to be... December 18th, the same day as our um, children's Christmas program. So we're going to follow the same uh, rules as of last year, but um, as we go further, I will give you more instructions as to what we're going to do. But I just wanted to keep you updated on December 18th for our cookie sale. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. There was another hand up. Marsh. Oh. You didn't know you were going to work this hard, did you, Joanne? Huh? So I'm Marianne Morrison, and Marsha Stewart, I, is she, I don't know if she's, oh, she's there, she is. Okay, um, just a reminder on the Women's Fellowship Christmas Party is on Monday, December the 5th. Um, it's just a cost of $5. Um, we'd like, sure like to have all the women attend. We're going to need a count pretty soon. Uh, you could talk to Marcia, you could talk to me, you could talk to Jennifer Steven or Kathy, um, or even um, Wendy at the, um, the church office. We'd be glad to take your name and money. <laughs> Thanks. I hope we'll see several of you out here. It should be fun. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. Oh, you got, oh there's Marcia. <coughs> And just to add about win, Women's Fellowship, if anybody needs rides, please let us know. We'll be happy to come pick you up and take you home. If anybody needs a babysitter, we can get babysitters. Again, just let us know, and we can get those babysitters uh, ready to go. So again, you know, Wendy, Marianne, me, whomever, but we're planning for a good time. Second, I'm formally announcing that, oh, I gotta find the right, December 11th, Sunday, is officially Wendy Murata Sunday. We're gonna celebrate and say thanks to Wendy. She's gonna be coming to our worship service and we'll have a reception downstairs. Invite you all to fill out a card, write out a card and a, a thank you card to her and we'll have a little basket downstairs for you all. But uh, we wanna say thank you. I've already talked to Wendy, she knows about it. Um, but just plan on that Sunday the 11th. Now, the problem is uh, the membership committee, a number of us are going out of town that weekend. So we're gonna need some help set up and especially clean up. So if somebody could help us with that, that would also be appreciated, but save the date. All right, just to fill you in, Wendy is Wendy Murata. She is our church secretary. Uh, she's been here for, I think, 12 years now. And is gonna be leaving. She and her husband bought some property down in uh, 
southeast Missouri and are in the process of building a house and are going to be moving there uh, sometime in May of 2023, but she's going to stop. She, she will no longer be the church secretary after December 31st uh, to give her time to work on getting that move ready and getting everything set and organized. So we're going to be remembering and celebrating uh, 12 faithful years of service for Wendy. And as Marcia said, people can bring cards and, and just little remembrances. It'd be great to have a big basket for her to, uh, to take and just, uh, just read and know how much she's appreciated. Anything else? Okay, at 3 o'clock, we're going to invite you all to come back again as we gather uh, to give thanks and praise to God uh, for Thanksgiving season with the folks from St. John's in Mokina. Their choir is going to be joining our choir. Each, each choir will sing, a, uh, sing an anthem and share, and then there'll be a couple of offerings where both choirs gather together. Uh, so hopefully you can be with us at, uh, at 3 o'clock as we truly kick off the season of, of giving thanks, joining sisters and brothers from St. John's Church. There's no coffee and immediately following church tonight because there's going to be a reception for everybody that comes at 3 o'clock. So if you want to share in coffee and, go home and then come back at 3 o'clock and then you'll have coffee and. So it's just being postponed a few hours. All right, so just think of it that way. Anything else? Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice, for the goodness of God's bounty is sufficient for our needs each and every day. God's steadfast love never ends. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. We thank God for the home that shelter us. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. We thank Christ for the food that nourishes us. 
Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Please join me in the opening hymn, number 376, We Gather Together. Please join me in the morning unison prayer. Almighty God, you have led us into a land flowing with milk and honey. As we rejoice in your manifold blessings, turn our thoughts to those who go hungry. As we celebrate the bounty of your table, focus our appetite on food that does not perish. Help us find our true sustenance in Christ, that our souls may never hunger. And move us to draw our nourishment from him, that our spirits may never thirst. Amen. I invite you now to turn to those around you passing the feast of Christ on this glorious morning. Good morning, Paul. See you. you also, sir.
Come on, that was great, wasn't it? Yeah, come on. <laughs> Thank you, choir. That was beautiful. We come to that time in our service where we have the opportunity to lift up and share the concerns and joys of our lives and of our hearts with sisters and brothers in Christ. So I would invite any and all that feel so led to, uh, to share your concerns or joys at this time. I just wanted to thank everyone for the calls and texts and the visit um, after my dad passed away a few weeks ago and for Pastor Mark to officiate the graveside service. My dad loved that we had found a church home here at St. Peter's, and as many of you know, he came here uh, on a few different occasions, and he loved it here too. So I just wanted to thank everyone for the thoughts and prayers over the last several weeks. Thank you. Lord, in your mercy. I have a joy, and it kind of comes on the tail of what Marcia shared earlier about our special Sunday for Wendy Murata. As Wendy Murata leaves to go to a new adventure in Missouri with her husband, we are going to be welcoming a new church secretary. Her name is Lisa Carlino. Lisa was the Methodist Church secretary for eight years, and unfortunately, most of you do know that today is the last Sunday for the Methodist Church in Frankfurt. They will be closing their doors, and their congregation will be going over to the United Methodist Church in New Lenox. But Lisa is, um, comes with a great deal of experience as being a church secretary, and is so excited to be a part of our church family. So as we say goodbye to um, Wendy, we have a joy in welcoming Lisa to our church family. So there will be no downtime in the office at all. When one ends, the next one will step in. So it's a great joy that we have that um, to look forward to. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
I have a joy today that my sister Terry is joined us for the weekend and is singing with us in the choir. Uh, she drove all the way from Lincoln, Nebraska uh, to be with us. Well, hopefully we don't screw it up. That, that's a, yeah. Now I got a lot of pressure on Thanks, Jim. Thanks. We're glad you could be with us today, sharing your gift and, and sharing your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Well, I received a phone call this week uh, from uh, Renee Fabian. Uh, her father, Ken Leland, passed away. Uh, my understanding is Ken had been a longtime member here. I don't know if any of you remember him or not. Okay. No. Ken is my mother-in-law's brother, and he's 10 years younger than she, but he had an accident. He lives in Oklahoma with his wife, and uh, he fell in a parking lot and cracked his head and had brain damage, and there was no hope, and thankfully he died on his own. I mean, they didn't have to, but that's who he is. Um, many of you probably never remember him. I don't know how much he attended here. Um, as long as I knew him. Daryl, you knew him? Okay. Well, Daryl, yeah, you're how old? <laughs> <laughs> Daryl's only 10 years younger than Marcella, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chip, you want to help him downstairs later? Yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so there, we're going to be having a, a brief service at Woodlawn Joliet uh, uh, Cemetery on December 1st uh, to remember him, but I just wanted to make sure that, uh, that everybody and anybody that knew Ken could keep the family in our thoughts and prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yeah, Joey. Especially for two people. My son wrestles for the first time this Tuesday. He's a senior, and so, um, but prayers more for my wife. Uh, every... <laughs> Every day when my son has come home from practice, he's had like an ice pack on or a new bruise or a scuff on his arm and it's driving her nuts. So um, just prayers for both of them. Do you go watch the wrestling matches? Yeah. <laughs> You'd be running out saying, leave my baby alone, right? <laughs> well, blessings and uh, prayers for safe time for for not only Evan, for all the, uh, the young people that will be participating. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Well, I, um, I have a, a number of, of, uh, of joys and, and, and thanks to, to give to God on, on this day. I, I am thankful and give, uh, give thanks every day to God for the opportunity to be the, the pastor of St. Peter's United Church of Christ and work with such a faithful group of people. Uh, doing all that we can to further Christ's mission here. It, it truly is an honor and a blessing, and, and there are a lot of times when I go home, well, there's a few times that I go home thinking, okay, God, why did you do this to me? But for the most part, uh, I, I go home, and, and I'm just, just thankful for the opportunity and, and realize I'm getting paid for doing this uh, and doing something that I love with, uh, with people that I love. Uh, I, I give thanks this morning. I went to the sink and I turned on the faucet. And even though it was Frankfurt water, I was able to have relatively clean, tasty water to drink. I, I didn't have to worry about, about anything. It was just there and it was available. And before I left, I was able to, uh, to go to the, uh, the little box where we have all our medications and take the medications that have been prescribed to me to keep me able to be doing the things that I do and realize just how easy and simple it is for me to, to be able to get the medical care that I need and I give God thanks. I went to the refrigerator to get some juice and something to eat. You know what? There was food in the refrigerator and food in the cupboards and I give God praise and thanks for that that I have uh, been, been put in a time and a place where I don't have to worry about where the next meal is going to be. I was able to leave and say goodbye to my children and my grandson who I brought to Sunday school and give God thanks for, for the gift of, of family, an extended family that's going to be coming and spending the holiday with us. 
I was able to come to the church and before I came here, I was able to go in and use the bathroom. I give God thanks for indoor plumbing and for toilets because I didn't have to worry about running outside. The point I'm trying to make is there are so many things that we take for granted that so many people in the world don't have available to them. So I just, I just want to make sure that we understand when we're sitting down to give thanks, it's the little things. Everybody do this for me. I give God thanks for the air that is relatively clean, that we're able to breathe, that we're able to, to main, maintain life. The blessings of God are all around us, and, and we need to be, to be aware and cognizant and appreciative of them each and every breath that we take. And lastly, I give God thanks and just my, my thanks overflows for the gift of my, my soulmate, Kathy. Uh, that I have been blessed with for 40, 44 and a half years now. Um, what? Oh, yeah. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> so I give Lord for Kathy and I was going to give God thanks and praise for the, the members of the church council but Chip you just shut that all to bits but, but no I, 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 I cannot believe how unbelievably blessed I am in, in so 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 many ways and I give thanks to God I give thanks to each and every one of you and especially to my mate of 47 and a half years. <laughs> you know I'm going to hear about this for the next month, don't you? Okay, all right. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. So let us take our, our joys, let us take our concerns, let us take our thanks and lift them up to God as we join together in a spirit of prayer. Loving, all giving God, we give you thanks for this glorious, glorious, bright, sunshiny morning. We give you thanks for this, our beloved St. Peter's Church. We give you thanks for all, all the myriad blessings that, that each and every one of us experience each and every day of our lives. And God, we just experienced one of the thanks that that, that I think we too often take for granted that is so important in helping us going from day to day, that is the gift of fellowship and the gift of laughter. We are blessed to be a part of a, of a faith community. You have brought us all together. And as we have, as we have grown, as, as we have matured, as we have said goodbye to, to some members and welcomed new, we are still always able to keep that, that joy with us. That joy that, uh, that, that allows us to, to come here to understand that what we do is, is so solemn. It is so important. It is so spiritual. But that we can do with joy in our hearts. That we can share in the gift of of, of laughter, that we can help to, to bring each other up. Because, Lord, you more than anyone in the universe knows we have made the world a place where laughter just doesn't seem to happen too often. We, 
we have created and we perpetuate a society and a culture and, and a world where, where there is so much animosity, there is so much anger, there is so much division. All things that we, that we, your children, have, have brought about, that we, your children, continue to, to feed into. So we give you thanks for joy. We give you thanks for laughter. And we pray. We pray this day for the strength and the courage to, as silly as it may sound to some, to take this joy out into the world. To help people to understand that even in the midst of everything, there are, there are so many reasons for us to be thankful, to give praise, to be filled with a spirit of joy, and to be able to be able to laugh. O Holy One, we give you. We give you thanks for all these things and we lift them up in our prayers to you, those, those concerns and joys we've shared, those concerns and joys and thanks that we have offered up to you privately and quietly. And we bring them all to you when we pray together as one. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The reading this morning is from the Hebrew Psalm, Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is the, it is the Lord that made us, and we are God's. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to God. Bless the name of the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever, and God's faithfulness to all generations. Hear what the Spirit says to the church. The psalmist starts us out right off the bat. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. My dad used to talk about making a joyful noise. That's what he called his singing in church. He loved to sing. And he loved to sing loud so everybody could hear it. And it brought him such joy. But he was so awful. It, it, was, it was like two cats fighting with four crows being chased by eight dogs. It was a, truly, and I, I used to tell him, Dad, I don't know how any human being can make a noise like that. It, it just, it was beyond me. But he loved to do it. And, and people loved to hear it. They really did. Now, they didn't love to hear it enough to invite him into the choir. And people would take turns sitting around him because you couldn't take him for more than like a week or two at a time, even just not once a day. But he loved to do it. And whenever I tease him, he would always, now my dad was not, was not a, a, an overtly religious person. Right? But he, he knew a couple of the verses and this was the one that he kept throwing back at me. And then especially when I went to seminary and get, got ordained, he loved to be able to point, well son, don't you remember what the, the Lord says through the psalmist in Psalm 100? And I'd say, no, Dad, what did the psalmist say in Psalm 100? 
He said, make a joyful noise to the Lord. I said, that's great, Dad. I've been hearing that for 40 years. What comes after that? And she'd say, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it was just make a joyful noise to the Lord. He was so uninhibited. It, it, didn't, it didn't matter. And he knew. He knew how god-awful he sounded. He really did. And he wasn't doing it to be annoying or anything. And that's why people just love to see and even hear him do it. Because he was just, well, he was just my dad. And that was, that was what he did. And I was thinking about him over the course of the last few weeks, especially more and more as I was preparing for today and, and thinking about and, and you know, going back to this particular passage. That's what we need today. We all, every one of us, we, we watch the news, however we, we happen to get it or read the news, and we see just how a messy place the world is right now. It is so easy to be, to be just overcome, to be overwhelmed. What can I possibly do? And then we just kind of wring our hands and say, okay, God will take care of it. What we need to realize is that, that we're in a, in a relationship. We're in a covenant with God. Where God says, yeah, I'll be there for you. And I'll give you everything you need to do it. But y'all got to do it. You've got to make the change. I can't do it. Well, I can, but I'm not going to. That's not the way we work. But we, we forget that and we just, okay, nothing can be done about it. See, we've got to remember, drill it into our heads. Where the world is today did not happen in the last six months. It did not happen in the last six years. It did not happen in the last 60 years. We've been building up to this point all throughout human history. And it's got to a point now where we are so overwhelmed. So what we gotta do is go back to the beginning. We, we gotta start small. And the way we can do that, the way we can do that is to make a joyful noise to the Lord. To show God our thanks. Not, not just by the songs we sing, by the prayers we lift up, by the words that come out of our mouth, by our creeds or our statements of faith. Quite frankly, those aren't going to change anything whatsoever. What's going to change things is, is us. Us going back to, to this psalm that was written some, some 2,500 years ago. And make a joyful noise to the Lord. Now, the world was not a great place when this was being written. The Psalms were probably written, uh, many, many of them, during times of Babylonian captivity, where, where, where the, the Babylonians came and, and took, took all the best and the brightest of, of, the, of the land of Israel and, and brought them to Babylon. So they were written by folks that, that, were, that were away from family, were, were away from, from the land that was theirs that were living under, under foreign rule and foreign laws, yet this psalmist was able to say, make a joyful noise to the Lord, worship the Lord with gladness, and come into God's presence with singing. And not singing dirges, obviously, but singing songs of thanks and of praise. I, I, I was, wasn't being facetious or silly or anything when during sharing what I've been giving thanks to after after working with this and reading so many other things the, the little things in life that we take for granted that we just don't pay attention to especially especially us because let's face it that land flowing with milk and honey that's talked about in the bible 
right now, that's describing us. That's describing our nation, our country, our place in the world. We have things that, that so, so, so many people in the world do not have. We are able to experience things that so many people in the world cannot experience. We take for granted so many things because they've, they've always been there for us, but they weren't always there. And for so many folks in the world, they are still not there. And it isn't silly to, to think about just turning on the faucet, of going to the refrigerator, of waking up in a nice warm house in a soft, cozy bed, of being able to, to just walk down the hall, still stay warm and cozy, and go to the bathroom. These, these are things that have been a part of our lives forever that we just take for granted. This, this, past, this past summer, we went through a, a rehab at the, at the house, thanks to the gift of the church and of folks. And we had about four or five weeks, I guess, where we didn't have a bathtub. And we were complaining and moaning about not having a bathtub. Well, that's one of the things you take for granted. Everybody has a bathtub. Well, you know what? Everybody doesn't have a bathtub. And there are millions and millions, probably billions of people that, that have never had a bathtub available to them in their lives. And as I think back to that experience, and we, we talked a little bit about it at that particular time, the time that, that we didn't have a bathtub, when you're doing a lot of sink baths and stuff that was just driving you crazy, it happened to be the coolest period that we had all summer. So we were getting all hot and sweaty and dirty like you usually would do in August in Chicago. So even in a time like that when we were going absolute nuts because something that we took for granted was taken away from us, that we didn't have available to us at a, at a, at a moment's beck and call, God still took care of us by making sure that it wasn't as, as problematic as it possibly could have been. We never, we never, we never take the time to just look, excuse me, look around and, and appreciate what we have. And even when we think we don't have the things we want, the things that we feel we absolutely need that are part of human existence, there are still so many things that God's blessings, so many blessings that are bestowed upon us. We just have to be thankful. We just have to be thankful and be joyful for what we have. We have created a society that looks at what's missing. And we've turned into a society and a culture and a people that don't look at the blessings that are right in front of us. We do that as individuals, we do that as families, we do that as a congregation. And what this, this time of year calls for us to do is to, is to look around and realize, appreciate all the many things that, that we are blessed with. So that even, even in the midst of the, 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 the turmoil of the world that we live in, we can still give God joyful thanks and praise for everything that we have. When we give someone a gift, hopefully they respond with a thank you. And that's, that's nice and we know that it's appreciated then, but but don't you really, don't you feel really good when you see the person using whatever it is that you gave them? You know, if, if it's a picture or something like that, that they put it up in their house. 
you know, if, if, if it's a piece of jewelry that they wear it. You know, if, if it's something that, that goes to a, a hobby that they have, that you see them utilizing it. I mean, doesn't that make you feel really good when you give somebody something and you see them actually taking advantage of that gift? I know I do. And I can only assume that God feels the same way. That God continues to rain down blessing after blessing after blessing upon us. And we give thanks to God through words. But we let so many of those blessings go by and just kind of set them off to the side. The way we can truly, truly show God our joyful thanks is to use and to share the many blessings bestowed upon each and every one of us, individually and as a congregation. We need to, to see what we have, to rejoice, and to give thanks to God. And to do so in a way of exuberant and unabashed and uninhibited joy. Even if the world thinks that the way we're doing it or what we're doing is really just noise and clanging gongs, it doesn't matter. My hope and my prayer for each and every one of us. My hope and my prayer for our congregation is that we take the time to look around and see what we have. Not what we're missing, not what could be improved, but what we have. To just take a few moments this, this week, and especially this Thursday, the day set aside to give thanks. And just say a prayer of, of thanks to God for all the little things, the little things that, that we may have up to that point taken for granted. And that we, we continue, that we continue this as, as a practice. I'm working on a, I guess I'll use the word program, even though that's not the right program, for 2023 for St. Peter's United Church of Christ. 2023 is going to be the year of thanks. The year of thanks at St. Peter's United Church of Christ. So there will be regular opportunities for, for individuals to share those things. There'll be invitations as, as, we, <coughs> excuse me, as we've had for our service today, uh, this afternoon of sending pictures of things you're thankful for. There'll be more opportunities like that during, during worship services where we can just show just, just you know, a, a few minutes worth of pictures of things that people see that all of a sudden fill them with thanks. It's going to be a time where we as a congregation and our church council and our church ministries will be challenged to find ways to help, to help inspire a sense of gratitude in who we are. We have so much. So let us joyfully give God thanks and praise no matter how lousy your singing may be, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Amen. So now I would invite all that are able to please stand as we join together in the hymn, Now Thank We All Our God.
be seated. With gratitude, let us offer ourselves and our gifts joyfully to God. Please join with me in the prayer of dedication. Bountiful God, we thank and praise you for your many gifts. You cause the earth to bring forth food. You cause rain to kiss the ground to sustain life. Receive these offerings as the first fruit of our labors. May our gifts be acceptable to you and may they go into the world as signs of our joy and thankfulness. In Jesus' name, who is the bread of life, we pray. Amen. Now let us join together in hymn number 381, Come, ye thankful people, come.
Please join with me in the commission for the following week. We will make a joyful noise to the Lord, worshiping the Lord with gladness and thanks. We will enter the gates of God with praise and thanksgiving, giving thanks to God, knowing that God's steadfast love endures forever and God's faithfulness is for all generations. Now let us join together and let there be peace on earth. Now may God, the invisible and the invisible, strengthen your hands and fortify your hearts this day and every day. In the name of the creator, the sustainer, and the redeemer, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. 